So folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're in the process of tearing down the Buell. I'm just taking in my time. And I suffered the pressure. And just doing piddly stuff for now. We'll get into the nitty gritty as time moves on. I, I'm in desperate need of a lift. Um, I'm old and my back hurts leaning over like this. And anyways, you may be wondering what it is you're seeing. What am I watching? I don't know, but I hate it. I had to uh, remove the, the front pulley sprocket um, and um, thought, well, might as well do it now while I've got something to hold everything still. So what I did was um, just pressed on the brake. I started out with my breaker bar and uh, you know, when you get old, you kind of get weak. So I was too weak, too weak to do it. Um, so then um, I phoned a friend and he said, hey, they put red Loctite on these. I said, oh gosh. So I applied some heat and uh, tried the breaker bar again, still couldn't get it. Applied some more heat, still couldn't get it. So then I applied a whole lot of heat until that thing was smoking and um, pulled out the impact. So Man, I tell you what, Hank, about it and ain't gonna mean in a life, man. It's like this, man. So got got it pulled off. There's the uh, nut to prove it, and um, yeah, man, that's a honker. Uh, so if you if you have to do the same thing I'm doing, um, you're definitely going to need some uh, some heat and uh, maybe a buddy to to press on the brake for you. Again, an inch and seven eighths socket. Impact did the trick. I was a little, uh, I was a little afraid to use the impact at first. I did use some um, PB blaster. I tried to upload a short, and um, this is the exact angle, right? I got a copyright claim, and I think it's because of that guy right there. For crying out loud, man! These guys are getting desperate. I think. Anyways, they'll probably do the same thing with this video. I don't care. I'm just trying to show you what's up. So uh, I'm gonna let this soak overnight in some evapo rust. Probably gonna get a copy right claim for this guy too. So uh, we'll see what ends up happening here. I, I've seen lots of videos of folks um, with a lot of success. This stuff's apparently a, a miracle chemical. So uh, we'll see. I bet you it's gonna do just fine. And then my intent is to do a wrinkle finish on it and uh, put it over in my cabinet and store it because again as i mentioned in uh one of my community notes to you guys that uh the buell is knocking so it's got a an odd knock that only occurs upon deceleration between 2500 and 3000 rpm so as i'm deselling it uh, it's pretty pretty prominent knock it's my my opinion that as i've mentioned before in other videos during my first trip to tennessee this engine got real hot real hot and i think it's damaged which is really unfortunate so i think it just finally said you know what homie you're going to have to do some surgery. And if that's the case, if it really is, oh, sorry, let me tell you what I think it might be. It could be the wrist pin. If that's the case, um, that's going to be an expensive fix. Probably just a whole new engine, um, you know, like an eBay engine or something. I don't know. We'll see. It, it, I may pull this thing apart and discover that the engine is fine, it's actually something else doing the knocking. That that's that is possible that that would be the case. It is pretty loud, and so it's it, it's hard to say. It's it's pretty it's pretty loud. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. Um, and I guess in some ways it's kind of advantageous to you didn't know I knew boards like that, did you? To pull the bike apart and go through everything and um, just refresh the whole bike and give it a new 
coat of paint on the frame and the spec, you know, it's looking pretty tired and um, fix some dents, potentially we'll see. Um, maybe get rid of these guys here and just go straight metal, which is what I, I think I prefer over those pucks. Um, some people love those things. I, I'm not terribly a fan. They make it look like it's got hips, you know, like they stick way out. You guys are going to have to pardon my mess. I'm, um, I'm kind of, it's winter time and I'm going through the shop and I got, I got this, uh, I did some dumpster diving and got this, uh, cabinet over here. So I've been loading it up. I do want to talk to you about another project. That's <laughs> as if one isn't enough. So this bike, this was the first motorcycle I ever rode ever. This is the one, the actual bike. So this was my grandpa's. He uh, lived in Southwest Oklahoma and every summer my brothers and I would go spend the entire summer, or oh, nearly the entire summer, on my grandparents' farm. And this bike was there in uh, Grandpa's garage. And every single year we had a fight to get it running because it would sit and uh, rust and car would clog up. And, and uh, we would, you know, fight with it and get it going again. And then we would ride this thing everywhere. And uh, when my grandpa passed away, um, well, us boys got the bike and uh, we were pretty grateful for that. So my other brothers um, have got their hands pretty full and I volunteered to take on the bike. It was a runner when it got to Texas, but there was a problem. Something occurred. We, we have some theories. We don't know what caused it, but this is a, this is a two stroke engine. It's got a rotary valve in it. Let me, let me kind of walk you over here. I'll show you some of these parts. So this is a rotary valve and um, it spins around and allows the, the uh, intake charge to flow through that port up into the crankcase. Let me pull this out a little bit. Sorry, you guys are kind of getting up. This is a janky video, sorry guys. I wasn't really intended to do this. You can tell I kind of fly up by the seat of my pants. Anyways, it flows up through the, the crankcase and and then on, into the cylinder on top of the piston and bang, right? Two stroke, pops every time. Well, the original one somehow warped. The thing has been good to go for 50 years. I kid you not, it's a 1971, so it's been good to go all this time. And then for some reason, we're not sure why, the original uh, rotary valve tacoed. And um, let's see if I can, and this is the inner housing, crank housing for the bike. And it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be a machine surface like this. Well, it got remachined, and you can see where it dug in the edge, ground all the aluminum, and then essentially supercharged the bike with powdered aluminum. And uh, it got two laps around my neighborhood, and that was it. Um, it seized up. You can see the rod. The rod is seized to the crank, and then seized the piston in the, in the um, cylinder. So it locked this sucker up. Got some new parts potentially on the way. You know, this is not, this isn't a collector's item per se, but it's, it's means something to my family. And um, trust me, it hurt when, when this happened, especially having the thought flowing through my mind, oh my gosh, this thing just got to Texas and it's, here we are. You know, it's, it locked up immediately. <sighs> Anyways, so this is a, a, another project. Um, my, my dad and my brothers are helping out in uh, purchasing parts. It is kind of piecemeal. You get what you get. Um, trying to find a stock bore cylinder for it because we could get the uh, cylinder board out, board, excuse me, board over 
and get an oversized piston. Oh, here's the piston. It's not supposed to look like the Grand Canyon. That's the intake side. So you can see the aluminum just peppered that poor thing. The exhaust side had some scuffing. That's probably, um, you know, 50 years of riding. Um, it probably seized up at some point in its life. You can see right there. That might have been from this event. Oh, this just won't focus. Sorry, guys. Might have been from this event um, that that occurred. All the scuffing. I don't. I kind of doubt it. That looks like it's been going on for a minute. So potentially this could have been a destined or it's it's destiny to do this. This could have been something that's just happening over time. So yeah, it is is really sad. <sighs> but you can see otherwise, it's in great shape. Um, a lot of fun to ride, brings back tons of memories. Um, my brothers and I did a lot of miles on that thing. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, it's just kind of giving you the status, which is some bad news or lots of bad news, whatever. I'm hoping that I can get the Buell going and this bike going. I've uh, battered around the idea of doing a Patreon I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think about Patreon. I, I don't know. I've never done that before. I'm kind of reticent to do it only because, um, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm really not. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is I have a family and I got bills to pay and, you know, spending tons of money on two bikes, try to get them going again, you know, other things take precedence, you know, other things being my family. <laughs> so, all right. Y'all let me know about down below what you think about the Patreon idea. If you think I should, um, if, if that's the case, um, then we'll go that route. We'll try it out see what happens. And yeah, we'll go from there. That's it y'all. Um, until next time, peace out and keep it between the ditches.